doesn't sound like I'm picking on her, because I'm grateful to have her in my life. It's nice to have a partner, someone looking out for you, you look out for them. Like, I did two weeks of shows out of town in December, and when I came home, my wife informed me that she made me an appointment for the gastroenterologist. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar, that's the doctor that sticks the camera up your butt. I mean, they do other things, but that's what they're famous for. <laughs> that's probably how they attract people to the field. You like photography? <laughs> and I got a job you're gonna love. <laughs> I didn't ask my wife to set up this appointment. I wasn't sick, I didn't have any symptoms. She just did it because she was looking out for me. So she casually brought it up. She goes, just so you know, I made you an appointment for the gastroenterologist. And I said, just so you know, I won't be going. <laughs> she was like, why wouldn't you go? It's just a consultation. I said, well, it's the principle. I'm an adult. I make my own decisions. Thank you. Anyway, so I'm at the gastroenterologist. <laughs> the doctor starts to describe the procedure. And I said, look, I should probably let you know, I don't really enjoy getting my picture taken. <laughs> I would be open to an ultrasound. I think a lot of men are curious what the jelly on the belly feels like. <laughs> anyway, the doctor, he didn't think it was funny. <laughs> and I knew it was precautionary, so I agreed. So he went over to his computer and he goes, all right, my next available appointment is in three months. And I was like, three months? This was in December. I didn't know if I wanted this procedure hang over my head during the holidays. Jim, you want another piece of pie? No, I'm getting a camera up my butt. I don't want some team of doctors to be like, wow, this guy loves pie. Mary, get out here. He's got a half a pie up there. I didn't know what could delay this important procedure, but part of me didn't want to find out. I didn't want the doctor to be like, well, the real delay is finding someone to clean the camera. That takes <laughs> Turnover in that position's insane. You know, people do it once and they're like, you know what, I'm going back on food stamps. <laughs> then I was thinking, maybe it's the doctor. Maybe he's like, dude, I can only do this procedure once a month. <laughs> then I gotta take a week off, sit on the beach, and ask myself why I keep sticking cameras up people's butts. <laughs> I could have been a dentist. <laughs> Again with the dental reference. <laughs> But in February, I had the procedure, and I think every man in here should get a colonoscopy, because I had to. <laughs> it's not an easy decision, because the best news you can find out from getting a camera stuck up your butt is learning you didn't need to have a camera stuck up your butt. <laughs> That's the best news. Yeah, we didn't need to do that. <laughs> we can just chalk that up, one for fun. <laughs> And the day before the procedure, you can't eat anything. And I'm a total pig, so I was terrified. But after I was awake for five hours and I hadn't eaten anything, I wasn't hungry. I was suicidal. <laughs> I was so bored. I was like, what am I supposed to sit here and feel feelings? <laughs> and then at noon and at 6 p.m., you have to drink this serum that I believe is made by a collaboration of x lax and Taco Bell. <laughs> Printed on the side of the serum, it should have just said, drink this in the bathroom. <laughs> Might want to grab a pillow and a book. Because <laughs> I tell you, I've had diarrhea before. <laughs> this is the point where everyone acts like they've never had diarrhea. I don't even know what Jim's talking about to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one who's had diarrhea in a hotel hot tub. Okay. <laughs> like we're at the same hotel. No, I've had diarrhea. I don't want to brag. No, I've had diarrhea, but calling what this serum did to my body diarrhea is an insult to the word diarrhea. My body made noises I didn't know existed. At one point, I thought I stepped on a puppy. I was in the bathroom for hours for hours checking email, ignoring phone calls. Because serum or not, you can't answer the phone in the bathroom because you can't hide the fact you're in the bathroom because there's an echo. Are, are you in a well? Yes, yes, I'm down here in a well. Just no kids in this well, making sure no kids fell in. But I kept getting this call from the doctor's office and I thought there might be important information like someone saying, do not drink the serum. 
So I answered it, and it was just someone confirming the appointment. And I don't know how someone's supposed to sound when they confirm a colonoscopy, but this person was really casual. They're like, hey, how are you? So we're going to see you tomorrow. What, are we having brunch? I thought I was getting a camera up my butt. She gave me the address. The next morning I went there. It wasn't at a hospital or a clinic. It was at some building. Just picture where you imagine the black market would harvest human organs. <laughs> what am I doing here? And I took an elevator to the basement. There was this huge space with all these makeshift rooms with shower curtains. And I was led into one. There was all this talking. You know when you're nervous and you think you hear things? I thought I heard someone go, I can't believe he's here. <laughs> I want his kidney. <laughs> and I was terrified. And then eventually an anesthesiologist walked in. He gave me a shot and he goes, I just want to go through what's going to happen. Right now I'm giving you some medicine which will knock you out. And when you wake up, you won't remember anything. You okay with that? <laughs> and against every instinct in my body, I just went, okay. <laughs> And the last memory I had is just watching the anesthesiologist leave the room as I heard someone go, I want his spleen. <laughs> and I woke up and I was fine. I mean, I'm pregnant, but I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. My wife, I haven't talked to her in an hour. You know, and, but we got five kids and that seems like a lot. And, and frankly, it's too many. <laughs> it's, it is a lot, but what am I going to do now? It's not like they come with free return shipping. <laughs> I, love, I love having uh, five kids. I travel with them because I don't want to be away from them. And also, I enjoy the look on wait staff's faces when I walk in with my family. Because my kids are five, six, eight, eleven, and thirteen. And we walked into a restaurant in Dallas, and I saw a waitress look at me and my family and quit her job. <laughs> I mean, she could have been getting off her shift. I just saw her look at us and throw down her apron and storm off. And I felt like we won. But I like being a dad, you know? It, it's, I try and do one-on-one -on -one time with each of my kids, but it's hard because I travel and there's a lot of them. So sometimes that special daddy and me time is just doing something mundane, like going with me to the post office. It's like, that's right, buddy, just you and me going to find out why we got this damn slip on our door. <laughs> Stick that in the memory bank. My dad, always making time for me. <laughs> Squeezing me into errands. I remember walking to the post office and listening to him bitch and moan about the federal government. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> Try to be a good dad. I got my kids a dog. I rescued a dog. Thank you. Thank you. I, well, it's not like the dog was drowning. The dog wasn't a victim of sex trafficking. I just went in a building, gave a guy money, and got a dog. That's how I rescued it. After that, I rescued a pizza. I actually, I had to wait to rescue the dog because the dog was in Jamaica. I don't know if it was on vacation. But I rescued a dog from paradise so it could live in my crowded New York City apartment. Sometimes I put the leash on the dog and it looks at me like, I used to run on the beach. <laughs> and now I sleep in a cage. My only hope is that one day you'll get rescued. <laughs> but rescue is the language of today, right? And we mean adoption. Now, people don't even say they own dogs. Now people say they're a dog parent, but I feel like dogs are different from kids. Like, you, you never hear a parent say, you know, my son had some behavior problems, so we gave him to a friend who had a farm upstate. <laughs> and we can run around and we'll visit him on weekends. <laughs> Jim, you're a monster. Hi, I'm Jim Gaffigan, and I wanted to just thank you for watching that video. It just makes me giddy. I mean, not giddy, but makes me happy. And frankly, I don't have much more time on this planet. And I was, I guess if there's anything else I'd want, it would be if you would subscribe. But you don't have to do it. I know you're busy. You know, you're cool. You've got other videos to watch. But if you hit subscribe, I don't know, maybe I'll have the willpower to pull it out. That sounded dirty. <laughs>